I'm going to start introducing the people around and then myself. Ariel Sebalasri, my wife, Eitan, with, who starts with the gray hair, waving his hand. Uh, and then Ariel, uh, um, Ariel Lasri Knafo. Uh, and then uh, Karen, who is now living in London, England. And um, um, Johan, who is uh, living uh, with us uh, in Montreal, Canada. And the last uh, of the uh, clan is uh, Aurélie, uh, who is not feeling well today, but she lives in uh, uh, Aventura around Miami uh, in Florida. First of all, I'm uh, Jean-Claude Maurice Lasserie. Um, yeah, uh, when I came to Canada, my name was Maurice Jean-Claude Lasserie. When I arrived here, I worked uh, like my father, who was a ladies hairdresser. Um, I worked in his uh, shop, in his beauty salon, I should say. Um, and I changed, I thought Maurice was uh, you will excuse me, uh, too Jewish. Uh, although it is really uh, a French word because uh, Maurice is really for Moishi. We had spent five days uh, in Paris um, and then uh, we arrived in, in Montreal. And in those days, it was uh, the planes took 24 hours uh, because they went from, we went from France, Paris to um, somewhere up north, I forgot the name, and then went down to New York and then went back to Montreal. It was a, a whole day almost of flying. But I want to talk a little about my grandparents. From my father's side, we were uh, Moroccan Toshavim, which means that uh, we've been there from generations and generations. But uh, are we, uh, uh, but from my mother's side, my mother's side was born in Avignon in France. Her own father was born in Izmir in uh, Turkey. He spoke Ladino. And uh, my ma mother knew Ladino, but uh, we never learned. We, they had expressions which gave me a certain inkling for Spanish because Ladino has a Spanish, uh, a, a lot of Spanish and Hebrew, of course. My grandfather, uh, who was himself born in Izmir and came to France, uh, where his five children were born. France, he came, Avignon was the city of the popes who were uh, offering some safeguards to the Jews. And in Avignon, there was a Jewish community. And my, my mother was born in Avignon. Um, uh, her own mother died when she was young. so. She raised her own uh, 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 brothers and sisters. And at about uh, the age of 20 or something like this, my grandfather came to, from Avignon, France, to Morocco to uh, rejoin his own brother, who was already settled in Morocco. And that's how I came to be born in uh, Casablanca because my father as a hairdresser had seen this beautiful red hair young woman who was passing on the boulevard with her mother. No, not with her mother, but with her father rather. Uh, and uh, declared at some point and they got married and there my whole family was born. My, uh, myself in 1937, my brother in 1939, uh, my sister in 1941, and the other one in 
43 rather. Um, I have to say that the war uh, is something that I do remember. I even remember uh, when uh, um, um, an obus, a bomb, if you want to call it, it's not really a bomb. It was shot by, uh, by a boat that this bomb went across the fifth floor, the little hut on the fifth floor of the building I was living into. It went and it hit the second building and it fell down on the floor, a shrapnel. Uh, uh, there was a big piece of this uh, um, uh, thing uh, that fell on the floor and I remember uh, going down with my father and my father taking uh, some uh, red uh, shirt and wiping my face so my blood would come back to my face because the, 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 the thing was red. And he thought by doing this, uh, the, 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 the blood would come back to my own face. And I, I, I remember uh, people saying, don't touch, don't touch, because it must have been still quite, quite hot. I was Jewish, uh, but that wasn't, uh, um, I didn't go, I, I didn't learn very much. Um, I had a bar mitzvah uh, that my, I don't know where my father got this guy who certainly was not a rabbi. Uh, he must have, someone must have given him uh, this, he was knowledgeable, but uh, uh, I, I wasn't, uh, um, I mean, I, I learned the Berachot, that's all I learned. So forget the fact that my, my own children uh, all read the, the whole parasha. Life in Morocco was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. Mon nom est Ariel, Ariel Seba, je suis née à Casablanca en 1954. Euh, J'ai vécu à Casa jusqu'à l'âge de 14 ans. J'ai eu la chance d'être scolarisée à l'Alliance Israélite Universelle, ce qui m'a permis d'apprendre l'hébreu et d'apprendre euh, mes origines, ma culture juive, séfarade, marocaine. Euh, en 1968, un an après la guerre des six jours, emportée par tout un mouvement, je décide d'immigrer en Israël. Et à l'âge de 14 ans, grâce à l'Aliat en Noir, j'arrive en Israël avec tout un groupe de jeunes et je vais vivre pendant trois ans euh, dans un organisme qui s'appelait à l'époque euh, Yemin Horde près de Haïfa, au Khofa Carmel, avec beaucoup d'affection, beaucoup d'amour et beaucoup de tendresse. Voilà, je suis une grand-mère, moi, comblée. Nous avons 13 petits-enfants et je pense que je ne peux pas souhaiter plus que cela. Je, pour moi, je me dis mission accomplie. Voilà pour mon histoire en capsule. Merci. I mean, we all went to the Sephardic Jewish school in high school, which is Maimonide, which I think shaped all of us to uh, to be to feel Sephardic and to feel um, more than Jewish, because I think it, it is linked to our Sephardic uh, roots and to have the uh, the will afterwards to to pursue. And even if we're not all of us in Montreal to still um, talk to our children, um, show our children and maintain some of the customs and habits that uh, that we were taught then by our parents and also by uh, by the greater Jewish community, uh, well, the Sephardic Jewish community mainly, I have to say. Most of the Sephardic Jews in Montreal are from Moroccan or origins. Um, my biological father is actually um, uh, Algerian, uh, but you know whether you're Egyptian. Uh, or Egyptian uh, roots, Lebanese, um, Moroccan, or any other, you're part of the, uh, the uh, Sephardic community, uh, first and foremost. Um, 
So their involvement in the community, I think, led us a lot. You know, we were born and raised in this micro community in Montreal. And at some point at adolescence, you go to college, you go to CGEP, you go to university, and you're forced to open up to this society, which you're not necessarily aware of because you've been growing up all the way through um, in this uh, micro community. So it has its pros and cons, but definitely, I would say uh, it uh, made us stronger and prouder of uh, who we are today. In some sense, we had a very privileged uh, childhood. We were very lucky to have been part of this, uh, this group and this community where we were all together in, in schools and in camps and knew each other and had a very intimate relationship to each other. Our school was only about 200 kids. Uh, so everybody knew each other. Everybody knew each other's mostly families and parents and so on. And we were all kind of together and that persisted. And I think that I see it very different today. Our children who also our children who grew up in Toronto uh, and who uh, we sent to camp, to Camp in Abrith, for example, in Montreal, in, in, in Quebec, in the Laurentians, where my wife used to go as well, or other camps where we went. And today their kids, our kids, and the kids, uh, the Ashkenazi children, have much more in common. They're not the same because both of their parents were, were born and raised in Canada, unlike our parents who were immigrants. And so we felt that difference, our children, and just like any, I suppose, uh, immigration story, you know, eventually things, uh, uh, successive generations. So we felt it, obviously not as much as our parents who were born in another country and immigrated, and, but we felt it as a second generation, very much a part of this, like I said, specific Sephardic Moroccan uh, community. We, we ate the same foods, we sang the same songs, we listened to the same, spoke the same language, and uh, and our children, again, it's different. And over time, I think eventually, yes, as things get uh, just like anything else for more assimilated and integrated. Because I was just going to say that my now 10 year old, um, maybe when he was five or six, said to me, um, Mommy, when I grow up, where am I going to meet a girl who speaks French? Like he, he kind of, you know, thought that that needed to be his path. I, I don't feel that I have been discriminated upon for my Sephardism. Um, I wriggle, wear it proudly um, when it comes up, but I, I've been given the opportunities that I feel others would have. Um, you know, if I didn't marry the Ashkenazi, it's because I, there was something missing. He couldn't be with my family and sing Charles Navour. You know, it was just, it was my choice, not because his parents wouldn't have me. As much as my Sephardic identity is, and that I'm now baking all sorts of uh, Moroccan cookies and cakes and sticking them in my freezer for my eldest bar mitzvah coming up in two weeks. Um, Dafina, every Shabbat, and I live in Atlanta with a very small, uh, Sephardic community. My husband always jokes, we were once at a wedding of an Ashkenazi friend and one of the moms who knew me, you know, uh, as, a, as a friend to their, to my, you know, other Jewish peers, never picked up on the fact that I was Sephardic, this mom. And she came to me and my husband and said, you know, Ariel, how is it being married to a Sephardic? And I said, fine, why? And she said, but don't you find it, you know, different or odd? And I said, but I'm Sephardic too. And she said, really? Um, both sides, and you know, my husband recounts this. It was, you know, I, I don't feel that that's that's offensive. It was a comment she made it. She just wanted to know if a Sephardic person, man, and 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 a Ashkenazi, whatever, if a mixed marriage would happen, how would that work out? I kind of geared a little bit sideways because I felt for a long time that we were too much two together all the time. And then the moment that we expanded, it was almost this like catalyst moment. Like, what do you mean? There's an outside world with other people. Like, this is all we've ever known. This is crazy. Like how? And we were just very, you know, inbred, um, which I love because the moment that I moved to Miami, I realized that all of my friends and family that I consider here today are also expats. They're all Sephardic. 
we have like some, you know, blended in uh, Ashkenazi friends, but, and it's funny because the people that I initially clicked and connected with off the bat here are people that are from Montreal, that are Sephardic Jews and Moroccan Jews, that I maybe had heard of a name here or there. And the second I moved to Florida, I was like, oh, you're from Montreal. We have that initial bond. Like you're Moroccan from Montreal. There's, it's almost like, um, it's almost an unwritten rule where it's like, you will come to my house for Shabbat. Like I will have your family over. There's no questions asked. It's, it's, there's a, a really, it's more than a bond. I think it, it's really, it becomes a part of your identity and people respond to that. And I feel like, I mean, Karen would know this also having traveled the world. I really feel like it's an unwritten rule that we have being a Moroccan Jew from Montreal, wherever you find yourself already being a Canadian, people have that affinity, but when you have that distinction, there's just this little spark and this glimmer that happens when you find, when you find that out from someone else, add um, the roots and add the, the traditions to that. I think it's, um, it's a lot more impactful and it gives people a sense of identity and a sense of community and togetherness. So that's something that I know we forged here. And that's something that I want to give to my son as well. I think I, I struggled with that identity piece for a long time. Um, people would ask me, what are you? And I would say, I'm, I'm a Moroccan Jew. And they're like, do you speak Arab? No. Have you been to Morocco? No. Do you, do you know anything at all? But my parents are born there and that's how I identify because I can't identify as a French Canadian. I'm not. I can't ident identify just as a Canadian. I can't identify just as a Moroccan. So it's this like combination of a melting pot of how we would really um, define ourselves. And it, I think because everyone has defined themselves in that same pattern, that's where we find affinities amongst each other. And that's why I think we all kind of tend to stick together. That's why we all pretty much like married into, into the same thing. I also married someone that went to my school um, that I had known since I was maybe 16 years old. So it's just, it, it just comes in as a full circle. School, um, elementary school was odd at times because that's the first time that I realized actually in Montreal was the first time I realized I was Jewish um, when I was in a non-Jewish school for the first year when we immigrated, when I was told um, you can't be Jewish and speak French at the same time. That's not possible. Um, you're either Jewish or Francophone. You can't be both. Um, and I think I was seven or eight at that time um, and came back home feeling, who am I? Somebody told me I can't be both, but who am I then? Um, and my second uh, acknowledgement of who I was as a Sephardic was in uh, an Atikanati school where I always felt like I wasn't part necessarily of, uh, of the whole class or the whole group because my, I mean, we weren't very um, religious at that time at home, but the melodies that I had heard, the customs that we were having were very different from what my classmates had, although a lot of them were Sephardic as well, but there was a sense that it wasn't totally incorporated. We weren't all uh, as one big family the same way we were afterwards um, in Maimonide. Um, and I have stories of how I felt uh, let down by, by the school, um, not necessarily because I was Sephardic, but because we weren't uh, following necessarily the right rules uh, at the time, which is not something that we would have felt in a, in a Sephardic environment. Um, so I have to say, yes, I, that's when I had the realization that um, we were Sephardic, we were different. Um, and my need really, really helped in um, forging a sense of belonging to a whole community. And like Aurélie said, um, I've traveled a lot. Uh, part of my own uh, profession, I'm, I'm working for the Canadian government, uh, has brought me to several places around the world. So we've lived in Latin America, we lived in Asia, uh, now in the, uh, in the UK. And more than just um, being Jewish, which is a very helpful, uh, aspect of coming every time to a new country, to a new city, uh, having the Jewish community to identify on, um, the Sephardic sense of it is even stronger. Um, so we've been, for example, just here in the, in the UK, um, we're next to uh, an Ashkenazi congregation, 
but still, um, we still identify when we uh, get to a new place as being North African uh, descent. My husband is not Moroccan, but Tunisian, um, and him being uh, also uh, a Khazan um, helps us integrate the synagogue and and show um, showcase how our Sephardic heritage is a bonus and not necessarily feel as if we have uh, something less from the Ashkenazi community, but um, actually feel stronger. And that has to do with the upbringing from my parents uh, and the belonging from, uh, the sense of belonging from the school, which has forged our, our, uh, our identity to be proud of who we are as, uh, as Sephardi. And the only, um, the only thing that I'm, I'm a bit more upset about is that I can't give my children, my own children, the same sound sense of belonging. Um, so we try to compensate with other things, but them as being all over the world, they haven't been able to integrate Ecole Maimoni the same way we have. And for me, that's that's a loss for them. I keep on telling them about our stories. My husband had something similar. He was also in a school with a very Jewish a Sephardic presence, not necessarily Jewish. So he was brought up as well with a sense of belonging the same way. Um, and the lack of it to our children for me is a, is, is a big loss, which I try to compensate a lot. And I'm quite happy because both my eldest boys are now in Montreal and um, embracing this Jewish uh, Sephardic heritage as well. Um, so I haven't done so bad, but at the same time, that's something that I feel that they are missing, but I'm thankful to to have been able to uh, to live it. Yeah, to, to me that's a large part of why my wife and I chose to to stay in Montreal. Uh, it's to stay close to the family, uh, to the grandparents, but also to uh, to the Montreal Jewish and Sephardic community. Um, the school had, um, you know some some play uh, in that decision when we were a young married couple we we had the opportunity to think about choosing to go and live a, a anywhere um but ultimately we decided to stay here and close to 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 the parents to where we we were comfortable to what we wanted to give our children our daughters um uh the same sense of belonging that uh, that we were um able to have as well um, what's your name? Uh, David. And where were you born and where do you live? So I was born in Atlanta. Um, yeah. No, I, was also, I also grew up here and still live here. So yeah. And um, what's the name of your um, Atlanta Jewish Academy. Okay. And does it have more Ashkenazi, more Sephardim in your school? Um, a lot more Ashkenazi. A lot more Ashkenazi. And how do you feel as a Sephardic in your school? Um, well, we're definitely, um, not like any different, I guess. There's really no thick line between the Sephardi and Ashkenazi. Um, I'm not sure if that's partly because there's so little that we just are there, or it's just that, yeah, we're not different at all. Um, but most of the stuff we do is Ashkenazi, like the davening and yeah, and the learning Ashkenazi, but in like uh, some of the Hebrew classes, we go over a subject or a mitzvah that we do. Um, sometimes they'll include the Sephardic way to do it. Um, as we're saying all this, and we're not suffering from any type of uh, um, uh, differences, we're, we're all, you know, going towards a, a larger, greater, happy, uh, blended community. But in no way do I feel there is a threat to the Sephardic identity uh, because uh, the third generation doesn't feel those differences as much. Um, au contraire, I think it is being embraced. And, you know, we're learning things from, and we've learned so much from the Ashkenazi community and I feel there's this openness where they also are uh, learning from us whether it's interested or not it, I feel it's just a fact so we're here I'm here to make sure my kids get those traditions 
uh, get that heritage? We are mixing like a man and a woman mix in a couple. They become part of a couple, but they are, each has its own, her own, his own identity. And this is what I see in 25 and 50 years. In Canada, and hopefully in the rest of the world, for the Jews first, since we're the awe of the people.